Hello, I'm William Boyce. Today I'll be talking about the Brayton Cycle, and this is for the MEC 411 additional project. So, some diagrams of what is the Brayton Cycle. The Brayton Cycle is composed of uh, two different uh, thermal processes. So, as we can see on the PV diagram here, we have two isobaric processes operating at constant pressure and then we have two isentropic processes operating at constant entropy. So what's happening here from point 1 to 2 you can see up here this being an air cycle from 1 to 2 air is coming in and it's going through a compressor being compressed. We're having to put work in uh, in order to do that compression. From 2 to 3 at constant pressure we're moving the air through a, the compressed air through a heater and uh, in a jet engine this would be a combustor so from three to four we're moving the uh, the combusted pressure pressurized air through a uh, turbine and from the turbine shaft we're getting work out now in a jet engine uh, would be an open air cycle that exhaust gases would just be uh, jetted out into the open atmosphere but for this example, um, we're going to treat it as an ideal Brayton cycle. So we'll assume that it's closed, and so from 4 to 1, the, uh, the hot gases are going to have to go through a cooler to come back, and uh, obviously we're going to get uh, heat out, as we can see down here. So now let's just look at the, uh, the TS diagram. And as we can see here, from 1 to 2, the uh, isentropic, as well as from 3 to 4, is another isentropic. And then from 2 to 3 and from 4 to 1 are the isobarics. Again, we have work in and work out, and then heat in and heat out. Work in would be the compressor, heat in would be the uh, combustor work out would be the turbine and heat out would be the cooler. Now we'll just go over an example to illustrate some of the some of the uh, the formulas that would be associated with the Brayton cycle. So here we have an example with a gas turbine. Air is being drawn in. Um, we have it pretty much filled out here. So we have our pressure one, our pressure two, uh, our temperature coming in 15 degrees Celsius which is 288 degrees Kelvin and our maximum temperature of 800 degrees Celsius being approximately 1073 degrees Kelvin so we want to find the thermal efficiency we have the pressures uh, so that's pretty easy actually we can see here 1 minus pressure 1 over pressure 2 to the power of gamma minus 1 over gamma. Now gamma for air being uh, 1.4, which is uh, pretty standard. So we can see here 1 minus pressure 1, 1.02 bar, divided by pressure 2, 6.12 bar, all to the power of 1.4 minus 1, divided by 1.4. So it's approximately equal to 1 minus 0.6, which, if you do uh, punch that into your calculator, comes out to about 40%. So not bad for efficiency. Now we'll say we want to find the, uh, the work ratio for this particular cycle. Now in order to do that, we're going to need to have all the temperatures. So, from using our ideal air, uh, ideal gas, uh, PV and T relationships, we can see T and temperature and pressure are related by this formula right here. Now we have T1, we have P1, and we have P2 as well as gamma which is a constant. So we can very easily solve for T2 using this formula here and as you can see T2 equals to 288 Kelvin being T1 times by the ratio of P2 divided by P1 to the power of gamma minus 1 
divided by gamma. And that works out to about 480 degrees Kelvin. It's pretty hot. So now we have T3, but we need to find T4. Again, this is all for getting the work ratio, which we'll get to in a minute. So we'll still use our relationships here, but we're going to remember the isobaric processes where P3 is actually equal to P2. They're along the same line, as well as P4 equals to P1. So then we get that T3 over T4 equals to this relationship right here. And then we can very easily solve for T4 using this relationship. And so we have it worked out over here where we have T3, 1073 degrees Kelvin, divided by the ratio of P2, divided by P1, to the gamma minus 1 over gamma. And then we get T4 equals to about 642.9 degrees Kelvin. So now we want to find the work ratio. What we're going to do is we're going to take our CP for air, which is uh, given 1.005 and we're going to punch it into this general formula. We have all of the temperatures as we calculated here so it just becomes number crunching more or less. And we actually can very easily see our work ratio coming out to 0 0.55 approximate. So this has uh, been a review of the Brayton cycle and some of the processes as well as the formulas that are associated with it. Thank you for watching.